Hey, it's great to be here in Chicago Ideas Week. So I wanted to start my talk with a question. So have you ever had to call the police an ambulance or a fire engine? So if you haven't, I've got news for you. Your chances of getting timely help are about as good as the toss of a coin. On average, one in two emergency vehicles does not reach its destination on time. And these odds are worse than the chances of dying from cancer, heart disease, and road accidents combined. So let's flash back to the defining moment where all of this began for me. So I was this 14-year-old kid on a holiday in Bangalore in India, visiting my grandparents. So I was in this taxi, heading for the airport, and there was an ambulance ahead of us that was completely stuck in the traffic and unable to move. And I felt this sense of helplessness and anger, and I thought, who might be inside that ambulance, battling for their life, and what could I do about it? By the way, I'm an asthma patient. I, I could have been that person. But I somehow knew that this wasn't just insensitivity or indifference or the traffic. I mean, this was India's premier technology city, a city of intelligent and highly educated people. Yes, it was, well, rush hour on a working day, but this was a matter of life or death. This was a huge problem. I mean, there had to be a good reason why it had not yet been fully solved. A single thread that I could really latch onto and fix this problem. So I did what a 14-year-old kid would do. A curious one, though. I googled on my iPad, but my first attempts were pretty much fruitless. So once I refined my search criteria, I finally began to get some answers, and some of them were pretty startling revelations. The eye-opener for me was that a siren is inaudible until within a 100-meter range, and drivers are also confused which direction an emergency vehicle is even coming from. So there are so many distractions that limit the audibility of a siren, as you'll see in this video. From Boston to Chicago, Orange County, California, to Montgomery County, Maryland. Port is some trouble breathing. We rode along as firefighters and paramedics lost precious seconds. He's now moving over. Just speed up behind drivers who wouldn't budge or were stuck in gridlock. Ladder 26 stopped cold for 28 seconds in congestion. Chicago engine 42 in a slow march through downtown. For 30 seconds, this driver in Maryland would not get out of the way for a paramedic unit. It matters because a fire can double in size in just one minute, and an extra 30 seconds to a cardiac case can mean brain damage or death. Well, what does all of that mean? Well, it means that a driver has less than seven seconds to pull over. So let's look at the volume. I mean, there are 240 million emergency calls in the United States alone, and one in every three calls is actually critical, which means that unless you shock the heart within six minutes or less, the patient dies. However, a one-minute reduction in this call-to-shock time improves a patient's chance of survival by 57%. And a three-minute reduction means a fourfold improvement in the odds. And this was the first window of hope for me. So I had absolutely no idea how to solve this problem at this point, but I knew what I had to focus on 
what I could control and improve. Everything pointed to finding a new type of early warning signaling system. So I spoke to emergency services in Sydney, Australia, where I come from, and my internet research findings were validated, so I knew I was on track. It was about this time that Sydney was starting to use mobile apps to track its trains and its buses, and I thought, why can't I extend that concept? If a bus can message a passenger, then why can't a vehicle message another vehicle? So now, all I had to do was design the system, test the solution, and code it. No big deal. <laughs> I knew nothing about Android programming, JavaScript, GPS systems, or web servers, but that didn't stop me. I tested my solution on the road and found that it was nine times faster and four times more accurate than a siren. And here's how it works, as you'll see in the video. Part system is starting up. Please wait. Warning, ERV within 500 meters. Please pull over. So at this time, the Google Science Fair in 2013 was announced. And as a global finalist, I got to share my ideas with eminent judges in Mountain View, California. However, the journey is far from over, and it's only just begun, and it won't be over as long as people are still dying from this problem. I've since enhanced my system, and this was to give it the capability to handle multiple emergency vehicles and improve its directionality. I'm in discussions with emergency service providers and potential sponsors to work out pathways to a full-scale pilot and eventually a global launch. The dream is for my system to be on car dashboards eventually. I've launched a social entrepreneurship organization called Always Vin, and I've tried to make it my mission to make a difference in the world by using technology, this tool that we have to innovate, to help to save lives at risk. I still have a day job, which is going to school, so I've had to take it step by step. So I welcome you to join hands with me and become a part of this change. I'll leave you with a quote from Archimedes. Give me a lever and a place to stand on, and I can move the world. I've got my lever and my place to stand. The rest will follow. Now it's your turn to go out there and change the world. If I think I can do it, then so can you. Thank you.